Well, crap, it's been five months into the year and I'm just now getting to the 2022 setup video. I'm sorry, but we're here now, so let's go. So a lot of my setup is DIY and I've made various different videos showing how I made a few of these projects such as my acoustic hexagon panels, the cable hider that's under my desk, the custom suspended drawers, and the Flex TV logo decor that's on the back wall. And I'll touch on them in just a bit in this video, but if you wanna learn more, the links to each of these videos will be in the description below. But let's talk about the room itself. And yeah, it's tiny. Only around six and a half feet wide by nine and a half feet long. And in my very first YouTube video I ever made, I did a time-lapse build of the entire room from scratch, which meant I was able to plan where I wanted my desk, the electricals, the networking, and the HVAC to go. And because the width of the room is only six and a half feet wide, the desktop spans from wall to wall, where it rests on two two by three boards that are anchored to the wall. Originally, I made my own desktop that I covered with a layer of epoxy resin. However, over time, it started to droop in the middle and separate from its joints. So I ended up replacing it with this butcher block countertop from the Home Depot. But this time, I installed a still U channel underneath it to prevent it from sagging. Now from the get-go, I absolutely loved how the desk gave the appearance that it was floating. So as I added other things to it, I wanted to try to keep that same look rolling. But because the triple monitors span the entire length of the desktop, there was no room for my PC to sit up on top. So I came up with this idea to suspend the PC under the desk, still giving the illusion that everything is floating. Building this was actually very simple to do, and it basically consists of a wood plank, steel cabling, eye bolts, and turnbuckles. I've had a lot of people express their concerns with having the PC suspended like this, and I'll be honest, I wasn't even 100% convinced either at first. However, I've had it like this for two years now, and I've never really had any issues. So if you wanna do something like this on your own setup, proceed at your own risk. And just to make sure, I'd only do it if your desktop is actual solid wood and not particle board or chipboard like uh, some of the IKEA desktops. As for my PC, I'm rocking an Intel i9-11900K processor inside an ASUS ROG Strix Z590E motherboard with three terabytes of Samsung 970 EVO M.2 storage, 32 gigabytes of Corsair Vengeance RGB Pro RAM, and an EVGA FTW3 Ultra 3090 graphics card. All this is nestled within a white Lian Lee Li 011 XL case that's being cooled by nine Corsair L120 fans and a Corsair H150i Capellix CPU cooler. Between the 3090 and the i9-11900K processor, it tends to get a little bit toasty, especially because all the warm air up there gets trapped underneath the desk. So to get around this, I popped a hole in the wall behind the PC and installed a four inch inline duct fan that's routed up and into the return air of my home central AC system. The fan itself is plugged into a Wi-Fi outlet switch that's connected to and controlled by my Google Nest hub that sits right here on top of my desk. Hey Google, turn on the computer fan. I ended up keeping the floating illusion going strong with these custom suspended drawers that are designed and built. The drawers themselves have worked well and the embedded custom LEDs give the whole set a cool modern look that highlights the separation between each of the drawers. My favorite part about building these though is that they gave me a unique way to support and hide the subwoofer for my Logitech G560 speakers. Now I absolutely hate seeing cables floating around and there's a lot of cables in this setup. So I made this ram stick looking thing that I mounted to the underside of my desk to route all of the cables behind. Now a good chunk of these cables actually pop into the wall and then come back out just behind my monitors. All of the LEDs that I've used so far in this setup are also custom and controlled by an open source program that's called WLED. All of my DIY projects use WLED strips including the strips lined back behind the desk and attached to the back of the monitors. The wiring for all of these LED strips are routed through this wall and into a cold storage closet where they're connected to and controlled by the WLED software. Now, if you wanna learn how to make your own WLED strips, check out the beginner's guide video that I've made that's also in the description below. And yes, for those of you who have been asking, I'm currently in the process of making the advanced video guide as well. So thank you for your patience and stay tuned. Let's talk monitors. My middle monitor is a 27-inch ASUS ROG Swift PG279QM. It's a 1440p display with up to 240Hz refresh that has a built-in G-Sync processor. I've absolutely loved this monitor. The colors are accurate, the blacks are deep, and the response is amazing. Sitting on top of this monitor, I've got this BenQ screen bar that provides my desktop with the perfect amount of lighting. 
The left and right monitors are both 27-inch 1440p 165Hz Acer Predators. Each monitor is mounted to a half-inch thick project board that's screwed into the stud spanning across the back wall. The mounts I've used are just some basic extended wall mounts that I got on Amazon for 15 bucks. And for the price, they've done a great job. On top of my desk is a custom designed 35 inch by 16 inch flex TV desk pad, along with a white Logitech G915 keyboard and a white Glorious Model O wireless mouse. Though the Logitech G915 is a little bit on the pricey side, I've really enjoyed using it. The battery life, its responsiveness, and just the overall feel has been great. Plus, the brushed aluminum finish with the white keycaps gives it a super fresh, clean look. The Model O mouse also looks the part. It's very comfortable and extremely lightweight. However, when gaming, I've recently found myself enjoying this. The Corsair Dark Core RGB Pro Wireless Mouse. It might just be my own personal preference, but I hate having my pinky drag across the mouse pad, and the double wing design on this mouse solves that annoyance for me. To me, it makes the movements feel so much smoother. Plus, at $80, it's not crazy expensive for a nice wireless mouse. Sticking with the white theme peripherals, I'm using the white SteelSeries Wireless Pro headset. This has honestly been one of the best headsets I've ever had. Although I will admit, the sound isn't bad, but it's definitely not as good as my old Astro A50s. What does make up for it in its lack in sound quality, however, is its overall comfort and, more importantly, the removable battery. Seriously though, the removable battery has been a game changer. The days of having a dead battery mid-match forcing you to scramble to plug in a USB cable are over. The genius part about this headset though is that while using one battery to power the headset, the other is always charging via the charging port on the side of the base station. And if it does die, say mid-match, swapping them on the fly can be done with one hand while still wearing the headset. For real though, a word to all other headset manufacturers, take note, because this is gold. The headset's base station is hooked up to the new Elgato Wave XLR. I recently swapped out my Go XLR mixer for this Wave XLR, and I've been super impressed. It doesn't have as many voice tuning features that the Go XLR has, but this guy is much smaller, so it doesn't take up nearly as much desk space, and the Wavelink software has worked flawless for me. Plus, a lot of its integration with my Stream Deck makes controlling it even easier. So you're probably wondering, all right, so you've got a mixer, but where's your mic? Nestled just behind my monitors, I've hidden my stream camera and XLR microphone. I'm not a huge fan of this traditional style of boom arms that either mount to the desk or go up and over your monitors. So instead, I came up with this solution. Using this Ulanzi microphone stand, I simply flipped it upside down, screwed the base to the wall, and rigged my microphone to the end of the folding boom arm. I've absolutely loved having this little rig. I'm not always using my microphone, so it's nice to be able to stow it away when it's not in use. It also retracts at such a low point that it never really gets in the way of viewing my monitors. And just behind my left monitor, I've mounted a friction arm that supports either my Canon EOS Rebel T7i or my Sony a7 III cameras that I use for either filming or streaming. And I'm also using these 11 inch friction arms to mount these cheap on for you light bars that are above my monitors that act as my stream lighting. A nice feature about these light bars is that they're compatible with Google Assistant. This allows me to utilize my Google Nest Hub to voice activate them as well. The downside of these light bars though, like other light bars, is that they tend to flicker when filming. So I've purchased these Elgato Key Light Minis that I plan on replacing them with. So stay tuned, more to come. Though it's probably getting time for a new chair, I'm currently popping a squat in this Secret Labs 2020 Omega Soft Weave. Secret Labs definitely builds their chairs to last. I've sat in this chair for almost two years now, and to this day, I gotta say, it still looks brand new. So there's still a lot to be done to this setup, and after a bit of a break in creating content, I am back at it, adding more to this room. So if you have any suggestions or questions about my setup, drop me a message in the comment section below. Also, if you've enjoyed this video, hit the thumbs up button for me. It definitely helps out a ton, and please consider subscribing. I am Bubba Mojo, and as always, Thank you for watching Flex TV.